you and Gary Coleman maintain a relationship the whole time, right? Yeah. So by 1998, Gary Coleman, who you said had made $18 million doing television, was working as a security guard. Yeah. See, the difference was when I got sober, I started working again. If you notice that, I started doing different shows. Yeah. It was hard for Gary because of the size he was. What was he going to do? If he wasn't yeah. playing the oddity on the show, what was he going to do? I was playing, you know, criminals, drug dealers, lawyers, doctors. It was hard for Gary to get those kind of roles. It just was. Well, uh, he was in the mall yeah. uh, shopping for some security guard stuff, yeah. and a woman approached him who was a fan, wanted an autograph. He said no, and then she started talking shit about him. Yeah. And then a fight broke out where I guess he punched her in the face a few times, and then <laughs> he had to go to well, court. He, he, and... He's got to get a step stool to do it, so. <laughs> he I can't know, just right? swing up. You got to go up something and go... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't quite there. know how, how he <laughs> figured that out, but he ultimately went to court and uh, he pled no contest. He got a suspended uh, jail sentence. And what, 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 year, what part, when was that? This was 1998. So what happened was by 1999, I get a phone call from Gary. Okay. And he goes, Todd, I'm sorry. I go, sorry about what? Gary goes, it's so easy to get in trouble and so hard to get out. And we go, I tried to tell you that, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> and that's when we came close, really close. Yeah. Close. Yo, oh, yeah. Because he realized that it wasn't my fault. Things, stupid things happen and then you can't just get out of it. Yeah. And they make it seem like it's just you. You know, what they always say about different strokes, oh, it's the curse of different strokes. And I was like, if that's the case, I should be dead too. I mean, how hard is it for Gary to be this major TV star to working as a security guard and people yeah. are recognizing him know, as right? the security yeah, guard? Yeah, that's it, the worst part. He could oh, be, a, yeah. listen, you know, Everyone, you know, other people that are really are not known could be security guards. They could have a fruitful life and go on and raise their families and get their paycheck. But when yeah. you're Gary Coleman with the what you talk about, Willis, and people are over there like, well, fuck, you look familiar. And, and the problem like, is, is that, you know, the media is going to make a big thing about exactly. it. They're going to embarrass you even more. Yeah. You know, and that's the sad part about it. But it was like, it was harder for him to get acting roles than it was for me. You know, yeah. like once the show stopped, yeah, I, get, I put myself through all that. But then again, when I got sober... I started working like crazy, you know, in different shows. I'm, I was on World's Dumbs for 13 years, you know, mm -hmm. one of the main leads on that, you know. And it's like, you know, you see, the different, what I always tell people is if you start out as a comedian, it's a lot harder to do serious work. Yeah, typecast. If you start off at doing drama, it's so easy to do comedy. Huh. Come second nature. Because drama, like, you, ever, you know, you've seen, you know, um, Robert De Niro. Yeah. He's hilarious. Yeah. And why, this. And why and is he hilarious? Fuckers, yeah. Because he's a good dramatic actor. Yes. If you've seen everything I've done when I was younger, it was all drama. Drama, 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 drama. Comedy came later. You know, and so comedy is just, it's easy. For anybody who's a, who's a, who's a dramatic actor, do comedy is not that hard. You know, it's just timing and all that. I even did stand up for 12 years. I did stand up for 12 really? years. Really? Yep. None in the United States, but all over. I mean, not me. All over the United States, but not LA. Everywhere else. Okay. Yeah, I had a great time. I had so much fun doing it. I learned, you know, fast stuff. That's why you know, when I was on Everybody Hates Chris, we used to have riff sessions. And most of us on that show were stand-up comedians. Mm -hmm. And we'd have riff sessions. We'd all just riffing and laughing. And then, you know, it got to the point to where the, uh, one of the producers, Oliver Leroy, would let me make up my own dialogue. A lot of my stuff was all, like, there's one scene where uh, uh, his brother comes in. And I go, I go, who's that? He goes, my brother went, oh, sh sh I was going to stab him. And I go, because he's your brother, I won't. So all that stuff, I, I made up so many dial so much dialogue on that show, and they just, it was just hysterical. You know, because, you know, it's just natural stuff that's fun to do.